that's everything I really wanted to talk about. So just give a summary. It's about governance. And please do come and talk about any of the topics. I could have waffled on for 45 minutes about probably any one of those topics. Uh, but yeah, please come and have a chat later on. Hello. Ready for a question? Yeah, sure. So on one of your earlier slides, uh, you said that the accounting firms contact you. On one of your earlier earlier slides, you said the accounting firms contact you, and they say, is this prohibited? Yes. Now, I'm an academic, so I probably shouldn't be speaking for practitioners, but a complaint I heard a few years ago from practitioners in the United States, it's not so much they're prohibited from doing it, but they also have to do what the standard says. So I hear practitioners saying, well, we actually have to do two audits now. We do one for ourselves, and we do one for the PCOP. So we'll take a 100% sample, we'll do data mining, blah, blah, blah. Oh, but the standard says we have to do a, a statistical sample based on you know, the, 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 the data, and we have to report what our results are. So we, so we do it. In other words, we do the sampling, and we do the 100%. So, uh, so, so I guess that's my question. I mean, are you running into kind of the same issue that it's not so much that's prohibited? No, someone drops the jacket on this scenario. Who's talking to me? Oh, disembodied voice. Yeah, PCOB. Was that the PCOB? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, anyways, it's just the point that it's it's not prohibited, but it's not endorsed. Maybe that's a better way of putting it. I, I think that that's a very good question. And in fact, one of the questions we had in the early days was, please, can you endorse things and put a little FRC sticker on them? And the answer to that is no. But what we can do is explain that disparity. And that's what we're really trying to do with, that's why I'm here today. It's why a lot of our public messaging is to try to shift that tone to say, look, just because it's not prohibited, you know, you start to think about sensibly whether it works in that context. But we don't have to write down every possible way of doing something for you guys to think about how you could do it in a way that does comply with the standards. That's why our guidance we did last year, uh, we found to be very well received because it wasn't telling people, this is how you do it. It was just saying, you've told us that you think that sampling the exceptions is prohibited. Here's why we don't think it is prohibited. And actually, there's one possible way of doing it. Please explore it. You, you are right, though. It's, it's a different angle, isn't it, between prohibited and this is completely fine. And what we're trying to do is get as far away from this is prohibited and we can't use it with principles. And that way, we can still remain open to new technologies and developing and thinking about how we can adapt. And it's really trying to get that messaging right about what we think is a sensible approach. And that's to think about quality. Think about how you can use these tools to improve quality. And as a regulator, if someone comes to you and says, we've got a great tool, think it works in the context of the standards. We really think it's going to improve quality. Given that one of our strategic objectives is to promote innovation and encourage quality auditing, that's when we need to think about our mindset as a regulator and say, well, what's our role in this? And how do we make sure that these kinds of tools are being used where they're going to make a big difference? I think I've run out of time, but oh well, more questions. Hey. Oh, sorry. So is one of the considerations for the tools that are advocated by the FRC, perhaps the way the tools are implemented or the source of the tools, like whether it's open source or it's backed by a nation state, that kind of thing? Very big difference. That's an excellent question. Where the tool comes from is vital. And there's a huge difference in the UK audit market. And I suspect you will see that everywhere in the world. Big four spend tens of millions developing the tools. They have all that knowledge internally. Some of those tools are open source, uh, which helps from some aspects, creates hindrances in others. You think about quality control can be challenging. Underneath Big Four, though, we have lots of smaller accountancy firms in the UK that are buying tools from third party providers. And that's where we've got a question that, that I'm glad you asked that because it, it picks up on a core issue, which is it's easy to see how that governance model works at a large audit firm because all of that knowledge is internal. Where you bought a tool, it becomes more complicated because some of the tools obviously contain a reasonable amount of IP, and there might be a limit to what those providers are willing to tell the audit firm about what a tool does. So we navigate a complex space there that we're still working on a lot. One of the, one of the issues we have in the UK is that we don't have direct regulatory oversight over third party providers. So whilst we can come into an audit firm and say, can you show us what this tool does? And most of them will go, yeah, no worries. If I go to do that to a third party provider, they can show me, but they're under no obligation to do so. So it's a complex issue. And again, probably one I could have done all 45 on or 50 by this point. Yeah. 
in one of your slides, you talked about audit data standards for improving audit quality. In Donald Bryden's report, he has one of his recommendations like FRC should develop audit data standards similar to what AICP has developed. So what is the plan of FRC in development of audit data standards? See, we already have international standards, ISO 21378, audit data collection standards, which has been adopted by UK also. So is FRC still developing audit data standards? So there's a very short answer to that and an extremely long answer. The short answer is we are not. The very, very long answer uh, is something I can tell you about later, but essentially, for myriad reasons you've just mentioned there, that another audit data standard on top of the load of other ones that we adopted from the EU, uh, which we still have, so, you know, we have the Brexit thing, which is still a bit confusing to everyone in terms of how it works from regulatory perspectives, but there you go. Uh, so yeah, short answer, no. Long answer, no, with a very long list of why. You have one more question. Another question by Veronica Carroll is, on your earlier example of too many exhibitions that were encountered of the debit side of the journal entry, a distribution of the debits should have been done before finalizing the software, and they would have realized the gift card had many entries. At that point, they would have determined that it was a valid debit and modified the software to exclude gift cards from the exception list. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree. 